and I've already found the lions because the lions are directly in front of me. Seems as though they're on a kill of some sort. I don't quite know what it is just yet, so I'm going we see the sticks pride is not often that we get to see them so i'm looking forward to catching up with them for them for a little bit and spending some time there's some little cubs that are feeding hello guys <laughs> it's good to see the sticks pride it's been a while since i've seen them a few vultures are around as well but how cool is that it looks like they've got a water buck that's what they've managed to bring down on chitwa's massive open area right in front of the lodge so those guests must have had a wonderful day of watching lions feeding all day long and look at the fat little bellies of those cubs they are full 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 so nice to see them and their mange is not looking too bad as well they're looking a little bit better than the last time i actually saw them which is good news there's one or two that are a little bit mangy but not as bad as i thought they would be they seem to be coming right a little bit and hopefully they'll be able to just last long enough for the rain once the rain comes along then we're going to have a situation where these guys will be absolutely fine remember that the mite in mange is proliferates during the dry period as soon as we start to go into a wet period then they start to calm right down and the the mites start to disappear and the little ones then will stop itching they'll stop scratching and their fur will grow back nicely just like the ingulma cubs has and they'll be okay look at the one on top of the tree they're just poking its head over the top there's a fallen over tree and there's just one little head that's oh no it's come down again unfortunately oh there it is you see this little head just poking over what are you doing oh no now you're down again I was having a little game on top there so none of the tiny tiny cubs are here they've only just been born so they won't be introduced to meat yet for those of you that don't know the third female gave birth it was about what is it now four or five weeks ago very similar age maybe a little bit older than the Inkohuma cubs that we've got so it's somewhere around there so the third female i don't see her at the moment i think oh no sh no i don't see her at the moment i think she maybe is with those small little cubs after feeding they often will go to the little cubs to go and get food but the other cubs out here have bellies the size of beach balls uh, they can hardly move at the moment they kind of waddling around which is great to see so very cool to see the pride at least feeding well and, and this will all help with combating those mites Aiden, who's six years old. Hello, Aiden. I hope you're having a nice day. You want to know whether the lions will swim in the dam here. No, Aiden, they're not going to swim. The lions are a bit scared of water. They don't like water on their coats. Also, today is very cold, so they don't want to go into the water because then they're going to be wet and cold and miserable. And there's crocodiles, and crocodiles are very dangerous for especially little lion cubs. I've actually seen a lion cub being killed by a crocodile, and so you have to be very careful with crocodiles. And so the lions will avoid the water. They'll go and drink there, but they're not going to go and swim in the water at all. Even if it was hot and it was really warm and the lions were having a tough time dealing with all the heat, they still won't go swim in the water because of the crocodiles. They're going to be very scared of the crocodiles, and rightly so. Crocodiles are animals that you have to be very nervous of now we've actually got some water buck that are still right here close to us that are watching the lions feed i wonder if it maybe wasn't a youngish one from one of these adults and that's what, or maybe it was the mother for one of them and that's why they're sitting just watching the pride feed on them which is not very nice but it is the way it goes it's how life works out here and you'll find that sometimes if it's a mother or a, or a young one for that mother they will spend hours just watching the lions feed off them as they kind of work out what's going on and try and come to terms with the loss there comes a hooded vulture that's going to land directly on the branch that's very nice isn't that wonderful to have a hooded vulture sort of at eye level close to us it's a very cool sight now the hooded vultures are really the ones that will feed right at the end they are going to be the ones that will get food only at the end of this carcass they're going to basically be the last last birds to get nutrition out of this in fact you'll find the white backs first and then the hyenas and then only will the hooded vulture get food later and there's the white backed vultures are on top and there's a number of them still arriving it's the clouds are seeming to part a bit of sunshine is coming out and that means we're going to get a situation where it will be perfect conditions for vultures to fly it will be a bit windy but it's going to be nice thermals that will start coming out and they'll find this fairly quickly and then come and try and finish that carcass once the lions move off
Lynn, you're asking why is it that the Styx Pride always gets mange? It's not that they always get mange, they just haven't recovered from the mange from last year. Remember, it's not exactly been a very wet year, and so the mange itself is still um, present in the adult females, and so they've had their young ones, and then unfortunately what's happened is that they've continued to carry that mange and as it's gotten dry again so it's proliferated and, and expanded and has gotten onto them. Also remember that the females even though they're able to deal with the mites, the cubs when they're younger their immune systems are not as good, they also lie together a lot whereas the females will kind of separate themselves a little bit more, groom themselves a bit better whereas the cubs are rubbing up and, and constantly in contact as so that mite crosses between them a lot. That coupled with the fact that you've got a situation oh look at those faces how cute is that and that's coupled with the fact that these cubs like i say have a weaker immune system than the adults means that they get the mite a little bit worse remember the cubs from last year died and these are new cubs so that mite was introduced to them when they were still young and that's why they've been battling with it if we get a few years of wetter weather and these cubs survive and they build up an immunity to it then the next dry season they should be a lot better off than what they are currently you can see the older cubs in the background they actually look a lot better than the the newer cubs so the one that's waddling off there they look a lot healthier sea control do you asking if lions always carry the mange mite yes they do in fact m most animals carry the mange mite even people have mange on them it's tiny tiny little mites that live in the hair it's completely natural it occurs but like i say when it goes through a period of very dry conditions that's when that mange populates and you'll have a situation where it will get really out of control and, and particularly in younger animals the adults tend to be able to deal with it a lot better but the younger ones tend to get a little bit out of control now i do apologize if you guys are picking up a lot of wind it's just here on chitwa open it is completely clear of any vegetation and that means it really blows through here and we get a situation where it's going to gust and so i do apologize if the wind sound is quite loud there's unfortunately very little that i can do with the wind it would be nice if it did stop at least it's blowing these clouds away and we look at least have a nice clear sky above us so hopefully tomorrow will bring about a little bit warmer weather and far less wind than we've experienced today but how beautiful is the light on the sticks pride i mean it's early afternoon but it's beautiful Ooh. okay you're wondering if the notches in the ears are caused by the mange not necessarily it might be they they've scratched and they've caused um scabbing and 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 they've caused a bit of injury to their ears that is now healing and you're getting those little notches that have formed it also can be ticks so ticks also feed off the ears of cats and they cause these little v's as well as fighting around carcasses you saw just now that the two little cubs were giving each other a bit of a hard time and belting one another and that will cause a little bit of scarring and scrapes on the ears every now and then but most of that's to do with the mange it's itches and they scratch the ear and they cut it and and they cause a little bit of a disturbance around the ears and around the face and in fact when you see mange it often is really bad around the, the muzzle area the ear area and then underneath the belly if you look at Tinyo he's still got a little bit of that mange on his tummy as well so it's normally in the warmer places the more difficult to reach places where they battle to groom that it proliferates and causes a little bit of damage so 